Hi there YouTube! It's Twisted Disaster here and I'm here to bring you my coloring tutorial and this is for a very basic cell shaded style so start here with the line art and what you need to do is I copy and paste so I have a new layer and then I will use the select tool to select around the line art. I'm sorry you're gonna see that a few times in here because uh, I was actually working on something else before this and so what I did here since I couldn't select like I normally do I just locked the layer and I colored it in with a red. That's actually very important to use a dark color. Don't use a binary color. So use like a, a faded red or a blue or a green. It, 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 the base color doesn't really matter as long as it isn't a gray or a very, very, very pale like pink or something. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking the brush tool and I am outlining where it is I will be shading. This is actually very important because with the line art I use, this is what makes the shell say, shell say, my shell say, shading style really easy to do. And what you need to do is make a new layer over the layer that we had just uh, the, made the line art red. I have the normal black layer on top of it so I don't miss and match and mess up. And what we have to do here is I outline where I'm going to put the shading with the binary tool. I use a very small brush. I use about five because my canvas is so huge. Very good um, note is, uh, especially for if you want to make prints, I have found out you need to make your canvases gigantic because if you don't, even if it looks big on your computer, a uh, 800 by 900 picture, it, in, in retrospect, it really isn't that big if you decide up to print. And so for the next few minutes, all I'm going to really be doing is outlining where I'm going to put the shading for this. And I can't really give any pointers on light source and stuff since I'm still learning myself and it took a lot of practice to be able to just kind of eyeball it without needing the little, um, little, uh, sheet, uh, not sheet, I should say, uh, vantage point, I think is a good word, or, vin uh, sorry for my stutter, I get really nervous when I do these kind of things because I'm a derp. And anyway, so I'm almost done here. And then right after is the next most important step. Oh, I should say, I've used this in a clipping layer, so I'm not on the actual red line art layer that I used. Now what I do here is I merge the layer that I had on top of my red line art layer. So it's all together now. And all I need to do is just paint bucket it in. It's very simple. See, I'm gonna paint bucket in here and there, blah, blah, blah. And there's, of course, since it is, you know, pixelated, you're gonna need to go back in and fix a few minor details like I just saw with her mouth. And it doesn't, it really, it, it, it cuts the time in half when you do it this way. Um, I guess I should talk a little bit about the picture. This picture is um, my original character, Tetsu, or Tetsu Gaia is her full name. And she is for my online story slash comic marked. Oh, I sped it up here because I thought the... Talking would take a little longer. I'm sorry if my editing's a little choppy at bits. I feel bad. <laughs> I'm still new at this whole thing, and I felt that this tutorial would be a lot easier than just, uh, you know, typing one up because I wouldn't really know what to type up. Uh, the basics, though, is this is going to need some very basic, uh, easy paint tool sci basics to use. But it's to me, it's very simple, and when I figured out this way to do it, it just made my life so much easier and so much faster to the point where now shading is almost the easiest part of a picture, if it's, like, just a character. Um, let me think, let me think. Oh, here I am, and I'm fixing up the details. Adding a few more shadows that I couldn't before. Oh, the reason why I left the eyes and the hair unshaded when I was doing the pencil part is because I shade hair and eyes differently than just uh, going in. Because I like a more... Um, I don't know what the other word would be. I don't want to say jagged, but it looks kind of jaggedy. Oh, and there's a little reply for role play. <laughs> Hi, guys! <laughs> I was currently talking with some of my friends. And so what I do here is I just kind of add the shading with a bigger version of the binary tool instead of just adding the highlights, or adding the um, outlines. But that's for me. I mean, I know a lot of people who do it where they just pencil it in and use shapes, but I like to make, I love doing hair, and I like making it all whooshy. That's what I call it. That's like all foof. All foofy. I want like make you know. I, I want you to have the feel of having very soft hair. Oh, also, I'm sorry in advance if there is a time lag again. I'm trying to get better at it. It's, uh, I don't have really the right programs to use this with. I'm currently only using Windows Movie Maker and uh, the sound recorder that came with my computer. 
So I, I'm hoping to get a more, um, in the future, when I have time and money, I want to get more nice video editing stuff so I can actually make nice videos and help you guys out because I know these tutorials have helped me a ton. Oh, okay. Right now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually adding a, <coughs> oh, excuse me, um, a secondary shadow to give it a bit more depth, I should say. I do this sometimes in my soul shaded work because it adds um, a feel of, uh, oh God, I, I can't think the word of it. It, it, more depth, I guess. And so what I do here is I have to do the same thing I did before, where I copy the line art, paste it in a new layer, clip it, and then I fill it in with a darker red. I, you have to use the same color. So, like, let's say it's a red. Use a red on a red. Don't use, like, a red on a blue or something. Oh, and there's a commission whip that I need to finish. It's taking me forever. But it's a lot of fun, and I'm happy how it's coming out. So I was, I was making my computer lag, so get that out of the way so I can add the shading. Like I said, I just kind of eyeball where I shade and stuff with this style. It, and, and it's a personal picture to me, and I actually really like how it came out. I'm very proud of myself. I decided to give my character more of a um, French variety of clothing for her era that she lives in, since she is technically uh, my world's version of France. And so I'm going to work better. I'm, go I'm going to get better, <laughs> I should say, at... Um, making my characters who are from different regions to actually dress like the part of their regions and what they would be wearing. So she's got poof sleeves. Poof! I'm actually really proud of how this came out. <laughs> she's eating a grapefruit, if you couldn't tell. It, it'll make more sense once I finish the coloring. I'm just adding the last shadows here for the spoon and her earring. All right, now here's here's where it gets fun. Um, I just I fixed a few other little details now. What you need to do here is make the whole layer multiply. You multiply it, and then all I need to do... Oh, I added a few more shadings that I made, that I missed in the binary part. That can happen sometimes, so it's good to always go back and check. Now, I'm going to select the parts of her skin. Very simple. And I'm going to go to Filter, and I go, and you mess with the hue and saturation and luminosity. Mess with it as much as you can until it looks about right. And boom! See, now I have nice skin. And then I'm going to do it with her... Um, the gray parts of the bodice with the lace, where I flip it all the way over. Since it is a gray, I move it like all the saturation all the way over to a gray. So it looks more gray. And see, it's just that it's a very simple way to do cell shading in one base color. So I don't have to. Because before what I would do is I would have every piece of color on a different layer. So the skin would be on their own layer. The eyes would be on their own layer. The hair would be on its own layer. And blah, 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 blah. And I actually still do that with my... Um, fully shaded pictures because I have to do it differently. This style doesn't really work. But with this smile shell shaded, which is supposed to be easier, that was the reason why I wanted to work more at it, is I just merge all the flats into one nice layer and then I use a base color for the shading and then I just fiddle with it and boom, it is all done. It, it actually cut my time well in half when I do it this way because it only takes a few seconds compared to having to go in each layer, clip at the layer, work with it, blah, blah, blah. blah. All right. Now here comes the fun part. I get to do the shinies. If I remember correctly, after I finished her hair, I did the shinies. Right? Oh, I forgot her rings. Her hair. And her fingernails. Oh, it looks so bad right now. I suck at drawing hands. But I'm actually drawing hands now, so... Note to all artists out there, you gotta, you gotta learn to do stuff you hate. Now, but yeah, shinies. Shinies are almost one of my favorite parts of coloring. I don't know why. I love just making things shine. Makes me happy. And like reflective. I actually work on her earring for a bit because I want it to be more um, like not crystallized but more glass looking I should say because her earring is sort of important to her. And her little chain. I changed it a bit so now she's gonna have like the ball chain and then a normal chain with it so she can very uh, have a variety of earrings. Then I do it with her rings and I think this is when I realized I fucked up on her nails and didn't color them in. Yep yep this is where I fix them. And then I just pooped made them purple. Boom boom boom. And so I have the little hypercam popping up. <laughs> now I gotta do the spoon. New spoon! And then I added shinies to the fruit, because grapefruit is shiny. I actually made this because I started eating a lot more grapefruit recently, and it just hit me that, yeah, grapefruit would totally be Tetsu's favorite fruit. It's got a little sour twang to it, and then when you add sugar, it's just perfect. And now I do the shinies in her hair. Actually, this is pretty funny. 
when I was doing this part, um, I had my stabilizer at zero, and I didn't realize until about halfway that I was like, oh crap, I left it at zero. So then I go back to 15, and you can see the difference. Like I said in my side tutorial, which I'm actually going to be revamping soon to help people out. Boop, boop. Add the shinies. Ugh, I love drawing your hair. It always makes me so happy. It's so purple and bouncy. It's actually gotten a lot more tame over the years, which I think is really funny. And that is all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm sorry if I went at a fast pace or I was rambling. I really didn't mean to. I'm still new at this. All right. See you in the next one. Bye.